Part 2 is all about translating your source high-risk creation into a real-time asset for use in your favorite game engine or renderer. This section contains almost 90 videos, adding another full 8 hours of instruction. We're going to start with a number of options for retopologizing, first starting right in ZBrush with ZSphere Retopology, ZRemesh, and actually using a combination of both of those to arrive as fast as we can at a viable final game rest topology. From there we're going to head into Maya, talk about different methods and tools for either cleaning up the mesh you've created in ZBrush by appending and refining your imported ZBrush mesh, or if you'd rather just create the game res from scratch within Maya, we'll be going over both vanilla Maya modeling tools, as well as the newest retopology tools found within the 2016 modeling toolkit. After we've explored these new options, we'll talk about refining and redirecting edge flow on your mesh to create optimal topology for animation. After all this, you should have an excellent game res all set up, ready for the next step, which will be UVs. Much like with the topology section, we're going to go over a number of options for you to achieve the best end results as fast as possible. You can feel free to use one, a few, or all of them to arrive at your end goal. We'll start off in Hedis UV Layout and go over basic UV functionality while we unfold all of our meshes in real time. If you want to do your entire UV layout and tweaking in Hedis, you're free to do so. Uh, but we're also going to head into Maya for UV tweaking and layout as well. And while we're in Maya, we'll cover how to UV your entire mesh much in the same way as Hedis using just the Maya UV tools. And of course, if you want to do your UVing in ZBrush, we'll have you covered there as well. We'll go over how to get the most out of UV Master for all your meshes, all from within ZBrush. And as always, after learning the different techniques, you'll be able to use one, two, or all the methods, either separately depending on the situation, or all together in conjunction with each other to maximize the strengths of each. When we move into baking, we'll go over even more options. We'll talk about how to bake all of your meshes together, all at once, right out of ZBrush using the FBX exporter, in conjunction with the Substance Painter baking options. We'll also delve deep into other options to get the maps you need. We'll bake our maps in XNormal, being sure to talk about the options you'll need to get a nice clean result. If you want to do all your baking in ZBrush, we're going to go over the steps required there to bake your high-res detail onto a low-res mesh using the multi-mesh exporter. We'll discuss how to bake maps in Maya if you're so inclined, as well as using Substance Designer to create ancillary maps for use in your favorite texture program. Finally, we'll head into Nald and get some really, really quick maps out of there. Then using everything we've created so far, we'll jump into Substance Painter and get this creature textured up. We'll discuss the maps we've created and how they'll be used in the program, and move right into getting comfortable with both Painter fundamentals as well as a physically based rendering system, so we're familiar with the rules of the system and how to best utilize them for the look we're going for. While we're texturing, we'll be touching on a ton of topics found within Painter. Mass generators, procedural textures, importing custom alphas, projection painting, quick masking, triplanar projection, texturing with particles, and a lot more. We'll also go into custom channels to make sure you utilize ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, and emissive to achieve the effects you need to make your creations pop. So we're nearing the end of the process now. From here on out, it's about getting your textures exported to the specifications of your renderer, and we'll be utilizing, of course, the native viewport renderer in Painter, as well as the new iRay renderer, conveniently integrated right into Painter. From here, we'll take our mesh and exported maps and hop over into Marmoset, where we'll discuss real-time rendering materials, settings, and options. Finally, we'll go into the super powerful Otoy Octane Renderer, where we'll discuss material basics, getting your mesh, material, camera, imager, and textures all set up correctly, create a render target, and discuss all of the powerful features built right into Octane, such as the render layers, render passes, info channel, and more. We'll go over a few different ways to light your objects, including HDR images, sun and sky, and how to use both of those together to get the look you want.